<clears throat> Hello, everybody. This is Better Show and me, Victoria Loskutova. Every Tuesday, as you might know, uh, we have here Better Show, which is a raw and real conversation, raw and real talk show with no holds barred, with badass digital entrepreneurs from all over the world. And also, I want to remind you that if you still didn't see what we've created recently, it's Badass Times is one and only in the world online publication for digital nomads. Plus, in addition, it's also a social network. So go to badasstimes.com, check it out, post your stories to inspire and educate digital professionals and share, of course, your digital digital nomad stories so today i have a guest it's actually her it's, uh, uh, it's alina trigubinko uh, business development executive at aware now uh, now platform for um, coaches so i'm happy to uh, invite her here but before i want to tell you that um, there will be a conference, Future of Wellness, on November 13th and 14th, online, of course, as all the conferences now, mostly. And we're going to have a panel discussion with Alina and her co-founder and um, my co-founder, Stuart Rogers, on self-awareness uh, in digital communities and how to be a self-aware digital nomad. So I'm inviting Alina and you meanwhile go to futureofwellness.online and check this out. Hello Alina, I'm really happy to have you with uh, me today. No, thank, thank you so much for inviting. Happy to be here too. Nice. Um, so actually what's your story and what is aware now about and how did you start it and when yeah so i was a producer for many years and i was traveling the world and um, producing different kind of uh, adventure shows culinary shows documentary shows you know whatever and i was along the way i kept meeting very talented people very gifted people that uh, dedicated their lives to help others, um, such as coaches, therapists, and different other kind of holistic practitioners. And uh, being myself a client of many, I was I had this realization that oh my god, they are very um, you know skilled in helping people, but they are absolutely lacking the technical support, you know, the whole infrastructure to service them while they are servicing people. And then I uh, was invited, uh, it just so happened, I was invited to become a, a holistic practitioner myself. I got trained as a craniosacral therapist. Um, it's a um, holistic mind-body approach. It's basically um, you know, body-oriented practice that works with mind and body at the same time. It's very profound. And I started being a coach myself, a, a practitioner myself. And then I realized, oh my God, I, I'm struggling too. And that's uh, where I decided to kind of, you know, put the, um, the service to people in, for, in, in, term, in, in, in a form of coaching on a site a little bit while I'll help those who help others to maximize their impact. Um, and that's how we started building our now. Uh, and we've been very honored to service such a great community of uh, coaches and consultants and practitioners and therapists and teachers now and mentors and um, and uh, other kind of professional service providers um, around the world. So yeah. how exactly the tech platform works? So how do you connect coaches with the clients? Uh, yeah, so we started off as a marketplace. So we... Um, tested out a few ideas um, and while we still have the marketplace side we decided to focus on the complete workflow support for coaches meaning that we have all in one platform for them such as you know anything from uh, booking calendar scheduling reminders notifications um, you know courses programs client um, management um, 
forms, quizzes, blogs, any everything in one platform. So they save um, significant amount of time and money on managing a ton of non-integrated resources, tools, as well as just you know the brain power. Um, some of the coaches, most of the coaches that start scaling up, they have to hire either developers or assistants or so on. So we automate a lot of the work so they don't have to kind of you know waste the resources um, on hiring developers, let's say, which is kind of going down the rabbit hole. So the all-in-one platform helps them to just you know plug and play and and work and and and, and uh, deliver their love to people. And then we started um, uh, licensing the platform to organizations uh, that uh, have several providers, several practitioners, coaches, teachers, and so on. So we became this platform as a service or a tech enabler for organizations to scale and provide a better, uh, more cohesive uh, service to their clients. Amazing. Is there any assessment for coaches or you accept anyone? Uh, well, um, you know, we've tested several assessments. We've kind of dissected the market. We've experimented, um, I think, quite a lot with it. And what we realized is that um, actually what matters for clients is not the you know certifications that coaches got, nothing on the outside, but actually how coaches and practitioners make clients feel. And that's the main differentiator, main kind of you know determinator of a success. Um, and as long as you know a coach is uh, transparent in their profile, and they have profiles for coaches too that they can use as their you know business cards or landing pages, where they can upload their certifications, licenses, years in practice, um, documentation, and so on. So as long as everything is legit then you know it's kind of um, coaches just bring their own clients as well as some clients find them through us and um yeah it's 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 really about chemistry more than about anything else of course if you know um, we have all of these disclaimers in place and everything that if it's a health advice uh, you know it's like the platform is not providing any medical assistance or medical advice so we have everything kind of all of the precautions in place but in terms of more of a personal coaching and executive coaching and professional coaching, then it's really about um, the two, you know, the, the the two people working together and having some sort of synergetic uh, collaboration and process. All right. Before I ask the next question, I want to tell you, our viewers, uh, that you can actually ask the questions in real time and I will see them here. So uh, comment below the live stream mm -hmm. and I will see see the, the um, qu your questions in a, and I'm going to pa pa pass them to Alina. Uh, so right now there are so many uh, coaches, business coaches, life coaches, uh many 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 it's, it's really it's a trend so what do you think uh how can for example i never used uh i, I never i never uh, had a coach and um i don't know who's a good coach or who is a bullshitter you know because there's just too many so what who is on your opinion a good coach Joy, do yeah. I have to like ask for some certification or and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, coaching as opposed to the therapy market is not as regulated. And this is something that perceived as a problem on both uh, sides of the marketplace, the clients and the coaches, the certified coaches themselves that goes through um, you know, rigorous um, training and, uh, and certification process. Um, who is a good coach and who is not? Again, I think it's uh, really about chemistry. I have, I myself have a team of coaches. And uh, I know that many executives that I know, they have also teams of coaches. It's usually, a, you know, a yoga teacher and then let's say a business coach, um, uh, a leadership coach, and then a new trend that's uh, been kind of boiling up for, you know, some time is uh, kind of highly um, specialized coaches. So let's say, 
leadership coach for technical talent uh, or let's say, you know, accounting coach, accounting career coach and so on. So um, it's really, um, there is no kind of, you know, silver lining in that industry. It, you have to really evaluate what you are looking for and then based on that, um, you know, you have to kind of evaluate several um, input uh, data data points about, about uh, you know, what, what what's possible in terms mm -hmm. of uh, approaches, modalities, and so on. So um, it's it's very, I would say, um, you know, uh, the, um, in a holistic world, um, different kind of um, holistic modalities are called healing arts. The same as coaching. Uh, coaching is an art. So there is no kind of, you know, linear uh, prescription, right? It's very much about co-creation. It's very much about figuring out, you know, the process that would work for you in the, during the process. Mm -hmm. What is so the would, red flag like? Mm, maybe not. Well, of course, um, you know, coaching gu guidelines are very, um, I, I, you know, support them, of course. Um, so getting any kind of medical advice or health related advice uh, from a coach is not, uh, without any disclaimer, is it, it, not something that you should go for. Uh, but um, other than that, um, yeah, coaches are uh, people that kind of, you know, take you by the hand and hand hold you through your process. They don't tell you what exactly to do. They just ask you the right questions and they make you um, reevaluate your own um, kind of statements as well as, um, you know, mindsets and so on. So um, there is a very big differentiator between the therapy and the coaching. And uh, usually uh, great coaches are referred to therapists when it's the right time. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's it's really a powerful combo actually to work with a therapist and a coach together. What's and the some difference between therapist and coach? Yeah, so uh, of course on the you know depth uh, of the work uh, of service delivered in terms of the mental health aspects um, and uh, what um, you know coaches uh, they have several um kind of um patterns that if they see they have to refer out and you know it's a long list it's a kind of it's a whole nother topic for conversations but professional coaches they know when it's a you know a, a case that needs to be referred to um, a professional therapist or supplemented you know their coaching has to be supplemented with uh, uh, mental health and uh, wellness services got it all right we have a question from Stuart Rogers, uh, my co-founder. Um, and I'll actually add it to the screen. Has the demand for coaches increased since the pandemic started? Um, that's very interesting. Um, so um, unfortunately, I have a very sad story here. Um, um, we used to have on our platform, we used to have this button that was like, you know, match me or help me find the right help where okay. tradition, traditionally <clears throat> uh, clients would just leave their stories such as, you know, I, I sold one business and buying another one and I feel like I'm having imposter syndrome or, you know, I just got, you know, promoted to be like, to lead this team. And, you know, I'm not feeling like I'm a right fit. Imposter syndrome ac across the board for women, you know, it was always a, a, a big case. Um, and then different other kind of uh, pure coaching requests. And then when COVID started, we started receiving um, very um, alarming um, requests such as um, you know suicide and uh, domestic abuse so we referred those cases out to professionals and just closed the button because we realized that you know this is something that we cannot handle but the coaches and the coaching organizations that we power up as a platform of course they grow tremendously especially the ones that were able to um, you know, move into digital uh, world uh, swiftly and, you know, digitize all of their workflows, all of their um, operation and uh, services, uh, which is actually something that we help them with. Uh, 
people, coaching organizations. Yes, of course, then there is a big demand. Mm -hmm. So you just closed the like the personalized kind of messages because it was pretty sad, no? Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stuart, for the questions. Question again, uh, guys. I remind you that feel free, please, to ask the questions under the below below the live video. Uh, not if someone reposting, just there below on our Badass Empire page. And uh, I want to remind you, if you just joined, that uh, Alina, Aware Now, and uh, Badass Times, um, we are going to discuss um, uh, well-being and self-awareness for, for digital communities um, on the conference called Future of Wellness. It's going to happen on 13th and 14th of November online. So in order to uh, see the agenda and, and uh, join us, go to futureofwellness.online and join us for this conversation and for many more other really badass, great, amazing uh, speakers and activities. It's going to be really cool. Let's move forward. Uh, so uh, explain me how... Um, how did you move from filming documentaries to well-being? I know that you told me already that you you uh, you've got the urge and you saw that coaches ha had need in tech support, but it's kind of jump like same like me. I I was studying uh, studying economy <laughs> economics, and then I jumped into the journalism because I mean uh, I just knew where I belong. Did you suddenly understand I belong here in well-being? Yeah, um, when I was producing, I had a lot of fun. I mean, I had a dream job. Uh, so many people told me that, hey, I always wanted to do that, but never had a courage. And uh, I, you know, I was traveling the world and filming from the helicopters, from pretty much everything that flies. I was working with, um, uh, uh, cons consuls, uh, ministries uh, of tourism and so on. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel very blessed to be able to do that. And um, I was kind of, you know, buying and selling content in Cannes Con Fil Film Festival. But then at some point I felt like, you know, I've achieved even more than I ever perceived I would achieve in the producing world. Because, um, yeah, I didn't even, you know, imagine me, you know, do, doing um, so much in that uh, capacity. And then I kind of felt like, okay, this is a time for something else. And that's when I had um, this vision of a platform and I saw exactly how it should work. I saw it being like a platform that kind of holds uh, several coaches and then it holds one coach and then one coach. And, it's, and then from there I, I could see like connection to people and then to their clients. And that's where I was like, oh, my God, yes, this is the next venture. Um, and it was I didn't know anything much about tech, uh, you know, kind of downloading a Chrome extension was the extent of how, much, how tech I was. So I had to educate myself. But lucky enough, you know, being Russian, uh, Eastern European, um, it makes it easy because uh, we have very strong tech talent in our countries, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. So, you know, finding a very success, successful tech entrepreneur or just, uh, you know, tech talent, very successful, very talented um, is super easy, especially when I moved to the States. I lived in San Francisco. I lived in New York, I lived in San Francisco. So when I lived in San Francisco, I was just surrounded by people that leave tech and I was kind of absorbing everything from them. And they were generous enough with their time to tell me, you know, kind of educate me and mentor me through initial uh, growth stages in tech. Um, and yeah, I'm very grateful for the community, actually. Eastern European, uh, Russian speaking community in San Francisco is, uh, it's actually, it's very uh, supportive. Uh, you know, whenever you ask someone to help you with something, usually they say yes, and then they introduce you to people and then they help you out. So without the community, I wouldn't be able to be where I am. Yeah, as an Eastern European myself and a Ukrainian, I'm pleased to hear that. 
uh, haven't been in America yet. Uh, how 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 did you how did you find your way to America? Why America? And I mean, I I already hear that the community is amazing, but aren't there a lot of awareness there? <laughs> companies like yours is a huge competition um you know competition um it used to worry me actually but now when i look at um other platforms other tools not as competition but as a kind of you know just something that also tries to elevate the ecosystem then i you know i re actually appreciate what they're doing because um you know as we have it, the saying in russian one is not a um, fighter in a you know you can fight alone um that's you know together jointly we elevate and you know bring our mission to fruition and also there is i wouldn't say that there is a direct competitor to us of course we compete for different use cases Uh, with different mm -hmm. companies and different platforms and different tools um but i wouldn't say that there's kind of you know x to x competitor to us um and you know what we offer as well as what any other company offers uh, is a unique value proposition um and you know the clients that need exactly this that they come to come to us so i look at it from that perspective okay but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah How I came to America, uh, I was again being a producer. I felt like um, I started working as a producer at the age of 18, um, and um, I was self-taught. So I was just kind of learning from people how to do everything. I didn't know anything about producing at all. And, but then at some point, I felt like uh, maybe I need to, you know, educate myself. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> maybe someone needs to, um, like, maybe I need to go to like a film school. Maybe they'll teach me something new. And then I went to New York, um, and I um, I sold my car and I invested pretty much everything in uh, education in New York um, because I felt I felt like, oh my God, you know, they're going to help me reach a new level. But then when I um, I got the one-way ticket to New York without ever being in the States. And then when I landed and then I started the school, I was like, oh my God, they're just doing basics. I, for some reason, I didn't count that, you know, they would start from zero, even though I already had several years of experience and I was leading the teams myself. I was like, oh my God, what did they just do? <laughs> I just, I just did you finish it? it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> But did you get the money back? Of course not. No, no. I, oh, I, man. I, um, I well, thank God. I only paid for one semester. Uh, I was uh, oh, know, cool. smart, smart enough to not pay for the whole thing right away. So I started. I got a job right away. Um, a Russian media company uh, offered me to represent them in the states. So I was opening up offices and facilitating, you know, uh, co-production and just leading kind of you know overseas uh, activities. Um, so, but yeah, that was a good lesson. You got to check <laughs> some things nice. first before you commit to them. It's better. So you self-taught producer and filmmaker. I think filmmaking is one of those uh, professions um, and industries where it's actually better to be self-taught taught because um nothing can you know you can learn so much about movie making about you know how to build processes how to um you know negotiate how to you know do everything but then you just like you know the theory is very um un, kind of not as useful as when you actually do it first time as a I don't know, uh, as an assistant, that's where you actually learn so much more than, you know, you would spend six months, uh, you know, listening about it. So I wouldn't recommend anyone going to like a producing school or filmmaking school, school unless it's the director of photography, because that's very uh, technical. Uh, but everything else, I think it's just pure, you know, kind of legwork. Practice, yeah, better would be assistant first to understand how it all works, right? Yeah, and you get paid instead of you wasting a ton of money. <laughs> yeah, sitting like just there in the classroom. Okay, yeah. we have another question from Bobby Moma. Uh, Hi, Alina. Are coaches services on your platform affordable? Yeah, so coaches set their own prices, of course. Um, so we, you know, have no way to control um, their offerings, uh, and we have coaches from around the world with a very 
different price tags. So we have coaches that I think um, one of the latest is I think 3,600 uh, an hour. Um, and then, you know, 40, 40 bucks an hour is also there. So it really, you know, it's up to them, up to their experience. So, you know, you can find uh, very affordable coaches on our platform, yes. Mm -hmm. Because as he says, Bobby says that, for example, in Canada, coach charges 600 for three private sessions. I guess that is pretty expensive and not everybody can afford it. So, it really depends. Yeah. Yeah, it really depends on the type of a coach. So this price tag normally is uh, for kind of business coaches and executive coaches. But again, but it depends. There is no like, silver lining, right? So there is no kind of rule. This is how much, you know, life coaching should cost. This is how much this should cost. So, and normally um, coaching sessions, um, you know, you kind of get the money worth value uh, if you choose the coach right uh, pretty soon. So, yeah, but again, you know, trust your own judgment and trust your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bobby. And we are Thank waiting you. for more questions, uh, guys. Okay, now my uh, playful part of the interview, we have 20, around 20, 25, 30 minutes max. So, my lucky number is seven and it's usually uh, aligned with time that we have and uh, so i encourage you to uh, tell me number from one to seven till we have all seven answered i have some um, some tricky okay. questions for you let's do number three <laughs> three what is your major la latest fuck up Oh my God. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> sorry about that, but you know, I think since I started working with so many coaches, I changed my mindset from the fuck up to a learning curve. So let me uh, kind of, you know, dive back to the moment to, to the, when I had the lens of seeing something as a fuck up, not the learning curve. It, it might take a minute. So I don't know. I, I don't think there, there are any fuck ups actually that we do at any time. It's always something that either our subconscious wanted or our conscious and that we needed that anyway. So I'm, you know, I'm a big lover of everything holistic and um, I might sound like a hippie, but I actually believe that, you know, everything is uh, pretty much, you know, whatever happens to us and whatever we as well especially whatever we invoke with our actions is something that we actually need so and it's okay. a we... for example something like really stressful or tricky situation that you managed to but that's not a fuck up fuck up is like okay i i failed or i yeah because we all we all fail no I, I don't see I don't that as a fail. Well, let me, I don't know. I don't think, um, let me think. Um, well, um, recently uh, we, uh, again, I don't see it as a fail, but it was very stressful. Uh, we um, got, we, you know, some fraudulent actors did a very sophisticated fraud attack on our system. So apparently uh, you can buy on the black market uh, fake Apple uh, PayPal accounts as well as uh, stolen credit cards. So they were using that uh, in our system and um, um, my intuition. So I was uh, sleeping and then I felt this like, you know, feeling at 5 a.m. in the morning, I woke up and I started checking Slack and email, which I never do. I have a rule that I first have my coffee in the morning and then I, you know, kind of meditate or I get, you know, my head together. And only then I open Slack and, and email, especially email. And um, for some reason, I started opening that at 5 a.m. And then I started seeing all of those kind of alerts uh, from different kind of analytic systems. Um, and I'm like, this is super interesting. Like, what is happening? And then I saw a ton of small transactions, exactly the same value. Um, so, and then uh, I texted to CTO um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, something like they're all coming from different IP addresses. And some of, most of them are coming from the same IP address. 
So we blocked, uh, we emailed those users first um, and they didn't respond, so we blocked them. And then later when we got contacted by uh, Apple, by sorry, why do I say Apple again? Uh, by PayPal and Stripe, um, that's when we realized that, okay, that was not a false alarm. Um, but <clears throat> again, it's not a fuck up. It's just um, something that was very stressful. <laughs> and of yeah. course, we, we increased all of, of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, there are many fragile actors, but um, mm -hmm. this one was very sophisticated. The way they did everything, if not my intuition, I don't think we were able to stop them so quickly. Do you trust your intuition 100%? Of course, always, yeah. That's the only navigation kind of GPS thing that is out there, I think. So yeah, um, what I I know is that like cybersecurity now is really important and it's gonna be even more important uh, with uh, de tech development. So I wish you this thing never happen again. Yeah, I wish everyone the same too. Yeah, uh, Stuart is asking. In some places, coaches have gained a bad name thanks to shady advice and dodgy client acquisition practices. What do you do to make sure your coaches have great reputations and how can we fix the perception of coaches in general? Um, that's a, you know, yeah, that's a great question. Thank you so much, Stuart. Um, a fixing perception of coaches i believe that coaching industry um with the huge booming demand uh, to its services so will go through transformation uh, in the next couple of years um because um you know a popular industry like this cannot go unregulated for you know for this long so um, for example um one of the early signs of that are um let's say uh supervision which is a very you know well established practice in a therapy um field uh, it's getting more and more um kind of mainstream in the coaching too so coaches getting kind of constantly supervised and you know working with mentor mentoring coaches um shade advice and um reputation um, I don't think I have an answer for that because um, uh, because again the regulations are not there to establish certain you know safety nets uh, in place and, um, and as long as they're you know it's kind of wild wild west and, you know we can do only so much to prevent that uh, but in our platform um, so how we work we have the software as a service and the platform as a service where we support any organization, you know, any uh, coach. And then we also have the marketplace. So in order to be uh, visible in our marketplace, they have to go through our own verification and interview. So we have a three-step process that we've developed throughout the years. And um, it's an internal framework on how we uh, make the decision of allowing coaches to be visible, kind of, you know, us to represent them. Um, again, I can spend like a, another couple of hours just, just just describing and you know discussing that. Um, but I think it's um, up for organizations. Um, yeah, actually, I think um, affiliations with organizations sometimes can be uh, some sort of sign of a quality assurance and quality um, you know standard in the practice of that coach. So I think I would personally, I don't look for them myself uh, but simply because i know a lot and i'm kind of insider in the industry uh, so i know how to judge quickly um but it, it's not something that I can just kind of you know tell you do step one step two step three i would say Maybe yeah we have uh, reviews on the website yeah reviews of course but you know i as a, again you know reviews are yes reviews are helpful uh, but it doesn't, you know, some people say that there was a horrible experience. Some people say that, you know, it's very subjective. Um, so. Okay. Thank you, Stuart, again. Um, thank you guys for, for your questions. And we're moving forward. Um, 
Give me the number. Let's do six. Okay. What habits do you find crucial for well-being habits for 2020 and beyond? Um, soft self-check and kind of uh, uh, intuition, I think. Trusting your intuition, like checking your gut first. Because in the era of uh, disinformation where it's super easy, again, you know, you being a journalist and me being in the media, we know how easy it is to tweak everything slightly. So, you know, it gives a totally different perspective, a totally different meaning. So um, I think our, again, you know, coming back to the intuition, I think that's the main tool that we have left because the, what, you know, what media source or what, and what kind of channel can we trust now? Everything can be, you know, easily manipulated and very, you know, it's up for someone's perspective who wrote it and, you know, what are their kind of, um, you know, many factors. So I would say, yeah, gut check. Does what you believe in feels right? Um, does it, is it, um, you know, does it feel, um, balanced to you know everyone else to the community around you to that like does it you know do good um does it feel good does it feel right uh, yeah. if you're not hurting anyone if you feel good inside because i totally agree with you 100 percent, and my intuition is crystal so if it feels good go for it if it doesn't feel good something is wrong there i think so. yeah all right uh there is a comment and a question from bobby again let's check this out one uh, famous secretary of Skurpatov said that coaches are not able to solve real issue but they create illusion fake world for the client what do you think about it um i think that uh, was uh, maybe um um you know, personal experience of uh, Dr. Korpatov, not, you know, it's really up to coaches that he uh, faced because it sounds like he didn't have, you know, a good interaction as a professional coach. Um, I didn't think that uh, coaches are there to solve real issues. They're there to support um, and they're not actually creating the illusion because, you know, most of what coaches do, they just ask you the right questions and you yourself make your own judgments out of your kind of answers. You know, so all of the best coaches I had, it's always, again, just, you know, they're asking questions. They're not telling me anything pretty much. Um, so I wouldn't agree with that. I think those actually who create illusions, those are the fake coaches. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are there are fake coaches in the world, but um, we can, I think, use our intuition to understand <laughs> who is right and who is wrong. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks a lot. Uh, next uh, number. One. Number one. What do you suck at, and what would uh, uh, what do you suck at? Uh, but improving it and how do you pro improve it no i mean everything <laughs> <laughs> everything you can suck at everything no i think you know it it like really one thing no it really depends on the perspective again um there is a you know the standard too so there's a, a huge area for improvement in every field of uh, you know my uh skill sets and my experiences so I would say everything. That's a that's a kind of you know the, the design of life to improve everything. Or kind of right. what are you working at most intense uh, intensively right now? Your feature yeah. quality or knowledge? Mm -hmm. So um, okay, public speaking. So I have a public speaking coach. And uh, having, you know, English not my first language, um, that was actually very frightening for me to do kind of, you know, negotiations and uh, sales calls um, with uh, big 
uh, potential partners or clients. I was just like freezing. And then when I started speaking at different conferences in English, I would ju also freeze. I was like, oh my God, like this is, you know, I, I'm so bad at it. Why would I do that to myself? So it was super stressful. But then I started working with a public speaking coach. And then I learned so much about how we breathe, um, about myself too. You know, what am I really afraid of? Uh, you know, why am I so afraid to be seen? Um, and then I started working on us um, Eastern Europeans, um, uh, you know, especially I can judge for myself, Russian, right? We usually speak barely opening our mouth. So I had um, sessions with my uh, public speaking coach where he was physically like, you know, like op <laughs> wearing gloves and like opening my jaw so I can actually, you know, pronounce stuff like Americans do because Americans, they are very articulate. And, you know, I, I love, I have a huge um, love and respect for the way Americans speak and their communicational skills um, and their professional yeah, skills. Yeah, they are loud. Too, they are like presentable and loud. They are not frightened like to say anything in public. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to, you know, operate in this reality, I had to, you know, it's not a natural skill. It's a very hard earned skill to be able to speak the way so people actually understand you and listen to you. It's still a work in progress. I am in the beginning of the journey, but it had it made a huge impact on my life, on my professional communications, on my self um, um, you know, self-judgment and just overall business life, you know, actually talking to people and not feeling insecure. It's a huge thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate. Uh, next number. Oh, let's do two. Next one. Okay. If you could create your digital clone, uh, what will be well-being skills would you have? well-being skills mm -hmm. um, that's an interesting question i wonder how you came up with it oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what well-being skills uh well i assume that Go pretty ahead. much everyone yeah I, I assume pretty much everyone would answer the same thing i would stress less or i would kind of eliminate the whole stress um you know capacity out of my body at all so there is there would be no stress um yeah i because stress is so i i mean of course some degree it's useful but then it's just such a waste um it's it's a disaster for our bodies for our mind for our lives for the community for the family um yeah so i would say stress i would eliminate stress mm -hmm. something add you uh, else you would add that that we human maybe don't have um mm -hmm. what would i add that we humans don't have i think hum uh, us humans are extraordinary species and i think we have so much that we haven't discovered yet i have a feeling um so it's really hard to judge what would i add that we don't have yet because i don't really know what we have and that's a lifelong <laughs> exploration journey all right uh, maybe we could like we could see our full potential and use full potential our, our, even our subconscious mind i think it would be pretty much interesting and really powerful yeah i think most of us are you know in this shape or form are going that direction some people call it you know self-realization self-actualization some people just without naming it still do that i think that's what we are here for anyway whether you know it doesn't matter how we call it but that's what we do with our actions mm -hmm. two more questions uh seven or five was this seven how do you see the development of well-being sphere in 20 years, let's say? Tech well-being. Oh, that's very interesting. So there are really cool um, conferences such as Transformative Technology uh, or TransTech and Consciousness Hacking. 
Um, I uh, used to be very actively involved with consciousness hacking, and I'm also, you know, somewhat involved with con with TransTech uh, LA. Um, I'm just helping and supporting um, its founders. And uh, this is the community where all of the, you know, pioneering uh, neuroscientists, nerds, um, people that are into, um, I don't know, psychedelic tech, uh, uh, consciousness hacking, you know, in all of its shape and forms, shapes and forms, they uh, get together and they create uh, all of these really crazy machines like you know this like scan not just scanner of your brain waves but like you know how to control just super super geeky stuff super interesting uh stuff that you won't see anywhere else um so i think they're the future they are creating the future so it will be more augmented with technology with uh, wearable technology um, such as, you know, I'm already using uh, nano patches to like um, help me focus. Uh, and uh, the, yeah, so I what believe that. that. What is that nano patches? Um, so I can, I don't know where it is right now. It's normal on my table, but I guess someone is using it <laughs> in, uh, in my house. Um, so that's, um, um, it's a, invention that came out of europe but there are actually several uh, people that are tackling the same um uh the same field um so it's a kind of wearable frequency so you put you know on so you know how acupuncture works mm -hmm. right there are several mm -hmm. spots that are extra kind of not sensitive but extra um, impactful if you um, influence on them or if you you know do something apply like needles so it's the same principle but instead of needles you apply frequency so basically you are having you can have like a whole day acupuncture and it's you know proven uh by thousands of years that uh, acupuncture works and then let's say if you apply acupuncture to like several spots here it helps you focus your brain so you just put those little uh, nano nano patches um, uh -huh. on your head and i actually feel you know it might be a placebo but i am you know me and some of my friends we are very sure that it actually works and there are there is research uh, and there is enough evidence to support that too so my friend well, actually brought do? what does it do to you what like what do you you feel more productive or clear mind or both yeah i just feel both. um in the same way not not tropics work um not tropics you don't know tropics nope so it's just um there are herbal and there are like chemical uh, not tropics it's just um basically um formulas to help you focus so if it's herbal formula then it, it consists of um, high vitamin b12 intake as well as uh l -th -th theanine and other um, okay. ingredients there you know if you drink a lot of coffee if you drink a lot of hot uh green tea and then if you take a lot of vitamin b12 you'll just feel supercharged you feel you will feel that your um focus is um you know kind of more stable rather than kind of you know being fragmented and distracted you just feel you know more present and it's very it, it doesn't have um i think uh, at least you know to my knowledge uh, very bad side effects especially the herbal ones and i only take uh herbal nootropics um, i usually take it when i have a ton of uh excel spreadsheets to work through which i hate so it makes me kind of you know go through them easy and the same is um nano patches um it's just the same principle but you don't ingest anything um okay well that's and, interesting i have to try for sure <laughs> Yeah, there's several cool technologies like this uh, that I've been testing out. Um, they do work. I think for them, it's a matter of uh, being not a kind of vitamin or, you know, there for early adopters. But when they actually will be very, um, you know, well, when we will build habits around them and when they will be, um, you know, in the product building, there are two terms. One is a vitamin and a painkiller. So. Mm -hmm. You don't want to build a product or solution that's a vitamin because you know people will play with it and then forget about mm -hmm. it you, you want to build something that actually solves the real problems and i think focus oh, yeah focus and um 
that's uh, you know with all of this kind of distracted uh, technologies and all of the social media we're getting you know more and more it's getting more harder and harder to have a stable focused time so that's mm-hmm. why i think those technologies and those kind of tools are getting more of a to the painkiller or yeah painkiller realm versus just the vitamin yeah well it's it's hard to to you know be focused and i don't know how how i guess like you said is gonna be with developing technologies that can help actually human beings not to go crazy from all the technologies (laughs) so technology if if there will be more and more um kind of wellness technology and well people who will work on tech for well-being we probably are not gonna go crazy (laughs) i hope yeah there's quite a big movement of uh you know mindfulness mindful technology and uh you know design for uh like humane design um so yeah Mm -hmm. and there is yeah there are quite a number of loud uh, impactful speakers that are spearheading and you know bringing knowledge about uh, you know not so productive not so uh kind of useful for for us design yeah um, i think we can discuss that forever but we have to wrap this up so yeah. then the last question is what are you personally going to do to help digital community to stay healthy in our rapidly developing tech environment Hmm. Um, well, I, I, you know, with our platform, with or now, um, we don't just support and help uh, coaches and coaching organizations partially by, you know, creating efficiencies and making everything intuitive and easy uh, for them. We maximize their impact so they can help more people at scale. And that's how we see our contribution to the community. So if, you know, let's say in our uh, certain researches or search studies, we know we realize that coaches uh, on average spend only 41% of their time working with people. The rest is kind of, you know, admin backlog management and so on, something that can totally be automated, at least, you know, partially. So we are on a mission to double their impact maximize their impact so they can help you know twice more people and you know us getting uh, easier access to the right help at the right time is uh, us as consumers of, of coaching and consulting and therapy too um is a you know our mission to just kind of help both parties to connect and work more efficiently and maximize the impact of coaches okay so i guess you're gonna kind of scale internally yeah in in, inside of the company and and improving the services to help people be more healthy and find and coaches to find the clients and vice versa i would say let's say you know how to so yeah coaches um it's sometimes hard for them to actually explain what they do, you know, how they help and then build out everything. So it's easy for the right for them client uh, to engage with them and so on. So to, you know, figure out, okay, this coach, this health coach helps with this, you know, I need that. Um, Making it easy to not just, let's say, access a one-time, but, you know, build a continuous engagement. So I can sound techy, but, if creating efficiencies in the coaching space um, is already, you know, kind of quite impactful. Um, and that's what we are focused, laser focused on right now. And we see this as a, as a benefit for both of the parties and for the community. Right. Well. Well, this this has been a pleasure to talk to talk to you, talking to you today, and having you here. And uh, this is a very important topic nowadays. And I would spend hours and hours to discuss this, but unfortunately, we already uh, spent an hour, and it's been like five minutes. I'm really grateful for uh, to you for being here with me and discussing this um, important things. Thank you so much, and I'll see you around. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the questions. I think I'm going to, you know, go on with my day and still think about them. So good job on crafting 
those questions as well as this experience. Thank you for giving the platform uh, for people like me to talk and express what why we do what we do. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Guys, and I want to remind you again that Alina, me, Stuart, uh, we're now a team and better times team. We are going to be participating at the panel um, on Future of Wellness Conference, which is going to happen on the 13th and 14th of November online. And we're going to discuss an important topic uh, of self-awareness in digital nomad communities. It's gonna be great. And by the way, you will you will be able to listen to the the, the great people uh, like Deepak Chopra and other celebrities, and you won't regret it for sure. So go to futureofwellness.online, check this out and join us 13th, 14th November. And of course, don't forget that we just started um the the one and only one and only i will not be tired to repeat this every time uh online publication for digital nomads and social network all in one called badass times you can share your stories expertise knowledge and nomad news uh absolutely for uh free come there write for us message us if you have any questions and let's create this amazing digital nomad uh, uh, publications to publication together that is times.com and me love you see you uh soon and don't forget be nice and don't be a dick today see you